said, God is so good. I said, Dios es bueno. Dios es bueno. The Lord is good. Oh, come on, Zion. Anybody with me that knows that the Lord our God is good and his mercy endures to all generations. Welcome to Light and Life West and welcome to this time of worship and praise unto the Lord our God. Amen. For those of you that are worshiping online, we welcome you also to the house of the Lord, whether you're with us live or whether you're watching later on. Those of us that are in the house, can we just welcome those that are online as well? As we're one big family. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord says in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, come on, you, some of you know it better than I do, and my foes, what they do? They came upon me to eat up my flesh. What happened? They stumbled and fell. And though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. There it is. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. Pastor Larry, what will you be in confident? Be confident in. I'm confident in the fact that the Lord is my light in every dark place. Hallelujah. And I'm confident in the fact that he is my strength when I'm weak. So that's who we worship and that's who we come to. Let us pray. Father God, we honor you this morning and give you glory. Father, we exalt your name on high. We thank you for Jesus, the son of the living God, who is our Lord and King. And we have come to worship today and lift your name. Would you fill this house with your glory? Would you fill the, the online airways with your glory? Would you fill our hearts with your glory? We'll forever give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We came to proclaim and to declare that we serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Who believes that this morning? Yeah. Come on, raise up your praise. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. Hallelujah. We serve a faithful God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Yeah. He's strong. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's yeah. mighty in power. Yeah. We bless the name of Jesus yeah. this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah.
He wants to hear from you this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship and we praise you in this place. You're worthy, Lord. He does reign forever. Come on, hands up like she said. He reigns forever. He reigns in power. He reigns in glory. He reigns in strength. Can somebody say, God, you reign in strength. Come on, tell them you are my strength. You are my source of power, God. You are my source today. Come on, can you lift your hands and offer a worship out of your mouth to the heavens before we even sing another song. Come on, you yourself, let's offer a worship to him. Come on, offer a worship that declares him as strong, that declares him as powerful, that declares him as savior. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Yeah, we lift you up. Everybody in the house say it now. You are my strength. Say strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches to me. Reaches to me. Say that again, everybody. You are my strength. You are my strength. Come on, somebody raise it up. Strength like no other.
Everybody sing, you are my strength. Strength like no other saint. That's it, sing to the Lord, let him hear you sing it. Strength like, say it reaches. If there's one witness that can say that, say, You are my strength. You are my Somebody get your voice up right now. Strength like no other. Oh, it reaches. Reaches to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you are the source of my strength, yeah. Is there one witness in the building? So I lift my hands. It's all in the total praise to you. It's to you. Can you say it with me? You are, yeah, yeah. You are the sun. Everybody raise your voice, say you are the strength of my life. You are the strength of my life. Can you raise your hand to a living God and say, I lift my hands? I lift my hands. It's all to you. It's all to you.
can say you deserve all of my praise. You deserve it. Can I get one witness to say my hallelujah belongs to Sing with me, my hallelujah belongs to you. That's the sound of his children say. My hallelujah belongs to you. Everybody in this building, raise it up one more time. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Belongs belongs to Get your hands up, everybody. Say, you deserve it. You deserve it. Say, you deserve it. You deserve it. Say, you deserve You deserve it. You deserve You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Say it again, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Everybody, one more time, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. If that's your testimony, say my hallelujah. My hallelujah yeah. belongs yeah. to you. Stay right there. All of the glory, all of the glory, belong, belong, belong. Now let's raise it up. Sing, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve. You deserve. You deserve. You deserve. You deserve. 
out of your beds and rolling over and getting dressed and coming out and joining us here this morning. We are honored and we're better for you all being here today. We thank you for being here today because one thing for sure, we know that the Lord has a word for you. Yeah. That we know for sure. And for our online friends, fans, friends, and friends and fam, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. And we hope to see you in the house one day. Amen. But in the meantime, we are so grateful that you tuned in and joined us today. And just know that the Lord is with you right where you're at. Just open your heart to receive the message. I hope that you were singing along with us and giving our Lord a hallelujah and praise. So thank you again for being here. So let's get into our announcements today. Um, first of all, we have connection cards that if you're here in the house in the front of the seat that um, you're sitting behind, there should be some uh, packets um, in the pouches with connection cards. And those connection cards are to help us to connect with you in a better way. And if you can put your information your name and address, email address. We promise not to sell it. We promise not to misuse it, but it's merely to connect with you. Amen. We would like to, if you already have filled out a connection card before and your information has changed, 
please make sure that you put the correct information so we can keep you updated on all the wonderful happenings that happens here at West. Amen. And um, also, as Candace would always say, if you are technologically savvy, on the screen, you will see the QR code that you can just put your, I better not do that, right? Put your, your phone up to the screen and you can upload or download that information and you can just go right to Access West at llcfwest.com. If you're online, you can do the same thing by accessing our email at llcfwest.com. Go to Access West and click the connections card and get your information and enter your information for us. And also, if you have prayer requests, please submit those prayer requests because you know we do pray for you. This is a praying church. We do pray for you and we reach out. And so we want you to know that we really mean what we say. Um, so we're on, on the screen, let's go to the picnic, because we're going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> so our family picnic is coming up in um, August the 27th. So please come out. It is a total way for us to have fun with friends and family and food, y'all, food, okay? There will be plenty of that. And as Pastor Charles would always say, Bring your best, okay? Bring your best and let us eat your food, okay? And we will do the same. And so, and, and as he always so says, don't bring the thing that just you decide, you know, I, I haven't tried this before. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll bring that that I haven't tried before. Don't do that. <laughs> bring the thing you tried before that makes people's mouths water, all right? And join us with friends, fun, food, and not football, but kickball, okay? <laughs> All right. And then the rest is, where is um, Adam? Adam's going to come up and give you some information about the back-to-school information for your kids. What up, y'all? <laughs> Our parents, are we excited? August Ooh. is here. You can send your kids away. Yes? No? All right, well, back to school rally is this Saturday. Praise report. Um, please give it up, give it up. Uh, we, um, we, we asked y'all to give um, so we could supply um, backpacks and school supplies. I'm proud to say, as of this morning, we have received 100 backpacks. All right, and we have supplies for every backpack. And so um, we, we set a goal for 75, we exceeded that. And um, I just want to say thank you to the congregation. Now the next step is to make sure kids are there to be blessed. All right. And so for our, our parents here, um, if you know young ones, we're all connected in your community. Tell them to come out. It's a, a time to fellowship. Have good times. We're going to have a game truck. We're going to have Nerf wars. So if you don't be letting them shoot no Nerf guns in the house, they'll be able to come there and get some and shoot up something. And, and, and we have uh, games, uh, crafts and food, and so this is a great time to just come celebrate the start of the school year, give to those that are in need, um, and to bless those, and to be, uh, um, and have them be a blessing for us. And so, please, I wanna encourage you, uh, spread the word, come out. Um, if you're looking to volunteer, I already reached out to a couple of volunteers that signed up. Um, talk to me after service and in the lobby, and we'll connect with you. We're gonna have a meeting on Thursday, and we'll uh, coordinate what Saturday is gonna look like, so please, if you're interested in helping, let me know and uh, get our kids out here to be blessed. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. So that's my husband, Adam. He's cute. A testament to the Lord's faithfulness. <laughs> Um, as you can tell, Pastor Charles isn't here, and so I would love for us to just send our prayer. Say, Lord, allow our pastor to rest and recover. And um, one thing I want to ask of you is when Pastor Charles is here and some of the younger ministers are preaching, he is the loudest one in the room. And so who's going to be the designated uh, shouter? Um, <laughs> I need to hear y'all in place of pastor being here in the flesh, um, but I get to bring the word this morning, and so I'm excited about that. Um, 
But before we do that, we have an opportunity to worship the Lord through giving. And we are coming up on a, an amazing celebration for this church of 20 years of ministry. And so on September the 17th, that is our 20th anniversary, and we are asking the church to continue to pray, but also allow ourselves to pray over an investment of a seed. And so we're asking for all of our members to invest in a seed in this church. Um, think about it as an investment in giving back to a ministry who has given so much to you and your family. And so that shouldn't be too hard for us to consider how can we invest more deeply and more intentionally into our church. And so before I go into that seat, we have a, a number of ways that you can give. And so you can text to give. You can give online on our website at llcfwest.com, or you can continue to mail in. Um, if you're not here in person, you can mail in your, your giving. But for those who are in the house, we're going to open up the altar for you to be able to come and give. Um, before I do that, I want to just encourage you all to consider that special seed for our 20th anniversary. Um, our church is asking for us to give above and beyond our tithe and for us to consider giving 200 from our, for our family towards this special offering. And so for us who have a difficulty trusting the Lord in our finances, I now want to raise my hand. That's that I'm, I'm one of those people. And this is a way for us to just continue to trust the Lord and his provision in the area of the ministry that has given to us. And so if you are willing and able, I just want us to just um, please stand as we just go before the Lord through our time of giving. And I want to cover it in prayer. And so Heavenly Father, we thank you for the spiritual gift of generosity, Lord. We thank you that we are able to give of resources that you have blessed us with. And so, Lord, we trust you in our giving, Lord. We pray that we can be a cheerful giver, Lord, trusting and blessing you for all of the ministry that you've allowed us to receive from this church, Lord. And so we trust you in this, Lord. We trust that you will open a floodgates of heaven, Lord. We trust that you will give us abundance, Lord, abundance of joy, abundance of resources, abundance where we can say, we know, Lord, that you are our provider. You are God, Jireh, provider, Lord. And so we trust you as we continue in this posture of worship through giving. In Jesus' name. Charles is able to get me to commit to teaching in August because I am a campus pastor at Azusa Pacific University. And so when August hits, things get really busy and I tend to disappear because things just get really busy. But I am excited for the word that the Lord has given me this morning for our community. 
And before I get into that, I've had the opportunity to serve our young adults here at Light and Life West. And I forgot to make the announcement, but next Sunday after church, our young adults are gathering in the ministry center. And so if you have heard this announcement and you just kind of want to check us out, it's an opportunity for us as young adults to come together and share. It's been such a good opportunity for us to minister to each other. I sometimes just throw out a question and then Folks just start praying over each other, prophesying over each other, encourage each other with, the, with God's word. And so it's been so cool for me to be able to just sit back and see how God has really shaped this group um, in such a just organic way. And so if you are a young adult and you are interested in just going a little bit deeper, getting to meet other young adults here that attend Light and Life West, I want to encourage you to mark your calendars for next Sunday. After church, we feed you and we get fed with the word as well. So come and join us in the ministry center after church. Amen. Amen. And so um, last Sunday, one of my good friends, Liana, was able to bring the word. And so I want to say you're welcome. Um, even in the when she, the first time that she was able to come with the seven last words of, of, of Christ on the cross, I was like, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Uh, I am so blessed to just be able to have friends in ministry that are just so powerful and that we can just encourage each other. Like, we're always like, hey, if I can't do it, I have a good friend that can do it. You know, being able to just empower each other um, in the ministry. And so it's been amazing as to know that she encouraged you all and said that the Lord is Elohim. And that he is established as being greater, right? And so we're created in his image. And so the things that we say creates as well, right? And so if Elohim creates through his words, we also create through our words. And I pray that many of you were um, convicted in ways to say, like, what are the things that I'm creating through my words? What are the things that I'm created and the things that I'm saying to myself that I'm saying to others? And so I want to continue in a, in a lane of just how not just the words that we use shape our, our actions and environments, but how our worship shapes our actions and how our worship shapes our environment. And so I wanted to, I'm thinking about the, um, my first year of college and undergrad. And I moved to Corvallis, Oregon. Many of you have maybe never heard of that town, right? Corvallis, Oregon. And so I grew up in South LA, so right off the 10 and, or the 110 and the 105, and very similar music worship and setting to this, very similar um, black and Latino uh, congregants coming together and worshiping the Lord. And so when I went to Corvallis, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to find a church home. And so when I went in, first church, I said, nope. <laughs> but... I sat it out. It was really difficult to bear, but I said, nope. Then I went to another church, and it was so different. Didn't know any of the words, and they did not have words on the screen. And I was like, nope. <laughs> then I went to another church in the same kind of experience where things were just so different. And the Lord convicted me because there were many times when I walked into churches and I left saying, worship wasn't that good. And the Lord convicted me by saying, you know what, it's not about a genre. It's not about a style and approach to worship. You need to find a church home, so you need to figure this out. And so what I learned was that oftentimes I was going into a worship setting looking for an emotional experience. I was going into a worship setting looking to be entertained, and I was left unfulfilled. Because when the music literally stopped, I did not know how to maintain a posture of worship. I didn't know how to maintain a posture of devotion and reverence towards God. And so I knew how to get into this experience that I grew up with, right? But I didn't truly know how to worship. And so it was a pivotal time in my life, which actually marks... 20 years of ministry, this fall marks 20 years of ministry for me. 
And that was a pivotal time in my life. And many of you are just like, how? 20 years. I'm just saying, when you say yes to the Lord, the first time you age well, y'all. Okay? But 20 years ago, I was able to have this pivotal time in my life where I learned what worship truly was. And that it was a heart posture, that it was, it, it was me uh, revering God in my thoughts and in my actions. It was me enthroning God in every space and opportunity. It was not just the songs. Because y'all, I, when I moved to Oregon, I had never, I had never been led by an acoustic guitar. It, literally, I'm like, what is this? We're singing, you are my strength, and it would have felt a little bit different. You are my strength. And it's like, what is going on here, y'all? It was so different, but it, it refined me in a way to realize that even though I was enjoying myself in church services, I was not truly worshiping. It wasn't until I felt super uncomfortable and I started to say worship wasn't that good. It wasn't until I started to be convicted and was just like, whenever I say worship wasn't good, it was because of my actions. It was because of my involvement and my engagement. When worship isn't good, it's because I came in distracted. I came in wanting and desiring someone else to pull me into the spirit when I should have already been in the overflow of the spirit before I came in. And so many of us, when, even when you've been invited to Light in Life West, you're like, man, do y'all have to be that loud? You're thinking like, can y'all sing a song that I know? Y'all are like thinking like, what is going on here? Why are y'all going so long? Can I sit down? Is that okay for me to sit down? See, some of us have those thoughts going on in here, and I want to let you know that you shape your worship experience. You can go in and out of any church, but also when you leave this place, you shape your worship experience. And so this fall, because at APU, we are coming off of a school year that was just marked by revival. We had so many baptisms and students coming to the Lord for the first or for the first time or um, recommitting themselves to the Lord. And so many of our students would say it felt like a camp high. I don't know if any of you were ever sent off to a camp, but you go to camp, you get away from your parents, you're able to eat whatever you want, and you have such a good time meeting some good friends, and then you leave, and you go back to the same environment, and you go back to different friends, and you go back, and you're like, how do I maintain the feeling that I had at camp? And so many of our students were like, we felt like we were on this camp high, and then the school year is over and they go back home to old friends. And they go back home to the environment that they actually really wanted to get away from, but they're back. And they said, how can we maintain this posture of worship? How can we maintain it? And so oftentimes we feel the results of that camp high. Here at church, it's like, man, we're, we're in the spirit and we're feeling it and we're corporately encouraging each other by each other's voices. And then once the songs are over and once we leave the doors, we are unable to maintain the joy and the hope that we experience through those three songs. We, the songs are over and now it's like, okay, what next? We leave church and it's like, what next? And so another pivotal thing that I learned 20 years ago when I said yes to ministry, one of our college pastors asked this question of, what do you focus on most? And he asked this question because he started to shape this language as to what we focus on most is what we give attention to, it's what we give honor to, and it's what we give power to. What we focus on the most is more than likely what we are worshiping in the moment. And so my question for us today is, where is our focus? And so as you think about that, as we can be honest about where is our focus, I want to pray and then we're going to jump into the word. 
And so, Lord, I pray that we can be honest about where is our focus. And as other things come to mind, obligations, fears, concerns, things that are stressing us out, Lord, I pray that we can turn those things into petitions right now, Lord, where we can hand it to you and say, Lord, you are our focus in this moment. You are enthroned in this time and place, Lord. We give it to you, knowing that we can trust you with all of those things that are consuming our hearts and minds in this moment, and we choose to worship you right now to not worship those obligations, to not worship those concerns, to not worship the things that hurt our hearts, Lord, but we are gonna worship you in this moment. Yeah. We're gonna put you above all of those things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And so, where is our focus? What we focus on is what we enthrone. Can you say the word enthrone? What's interesting about this word enthroned when you see it in scripture, it literally means to dwell, remain, or inhabit. And so when we see in scripture where the Lord inhabits the praises of his people or the Lord is enthroned in the presence of, of, of the praises of his people, it is saying that to enthrone something is to dwell there with it. To enthrone something is to remain there with it. And so whatever we enthrone is what we dwell on. And those things that we dwell on resides over our thoughts, our words, and our actions. So many of us would never say, like, I straight up worship idols. Right. None of us will say that I put things before the Lord. None of us will truly say that. But we become unaware of our tendency to enthrone people to enthrone experiences and desires, to enthrone fears over God. And that is idol worship. When we enthrone people, when our lives are literally wrapped and revolving around pleasing someone else, we're enthroning them. Yeah. When my fears keep me from making decisions or making needed changes in my life, my fear is being enthroned over the possibilities that God can offer. When my desires and my needs and wants for pleasure guide, and guide my actions and decisions, I am enthroning that need for pleasure right now. And I'm making decisions and actions where I'm enthroning those things over God. And so many of us, we would not say that we are idol worshipers. But we live a worshiped, shaped life. And what I mean by this is, even when we are unknowingly worshiping things that are not God, it is shaping our life. Mm -hmm. Scripture clearly says that God requires that we worship in spirit and truth. But the king of this world, our adversary, does not require truth at all. And so we can un be unaware of the ways we enthrone the desires of this world and enthrone our fears and enthrone our feelings more than we enthrone Christ. And so with that being said, I said we live a worship life. Whatever we enthrone shapes our, our actions and it shapes our atmosphere. I want you to think about this. When we enthrone a particular emotion, how that shapes our atmosphere. When we enthrone a particular desire, how that shapes our actions. We live a worship-shaped life and we have a choice to make. What type of worship do we want shaping our life? And so I tend to do these check-ins because I'm a very musical person. I usually always have a song kind of going in, and I say, like, it's kind of like my life soundtrack. Like, I always usually have a song going on in my life. And there are times when I have, like, completely struggled with FOMO. And that's an acronym with fear of missing out. And so I'm always, especially like in the housing market, oh my goodness, the fear of missing out. It's like, 
you're, you're ready to make some moves and then the interest rates change and then you're ready to make some moves and then it's just like, come on, God, like, I, like what do we do, right? So this fear of missing out has led to discontentment where it's like we own a home and I should be grateful for that opportunity to have done that. But then I'm like, dang, we've just missed out on any other opportunities because everything's are, everything is so expensive. And so I'm kicking my butt, like this discontentment is kicking my butt. And so when I'm leaning into that, Lord, I just want to be content in every circumstance, Lord. I want to be grateful for the things that you've blessed me with. And when I'm leaning into those things, I can hear songs like, I can see the goodness of the Lord. When I'm leaning into those things, I have a song that's reminding me of the Lord's goodness. But when I have a song in my head that's early 2000s hip-hop or R&B, I know that I have slipped back into the what ifs. How I could have done something different, how I should have done something different, how I could have said something different. Y'all, seriously, when I start slipping back into that early 2000s playlist, I'm like, man, that things could have been different. And I slip back into discontentment. So I'm left discouraged and distracted and I've wasted time enthroning the thought of what ifs versus allowing myself to be grateful and make the most of what's literally in front of me. And so the simple scripture that I'm sure many of us are familiar with that I have for us today comes from Proverbs 4, 23. And it says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. It's very simple, and I remember when I first started to hear this phrase when I was younger, I thought guarding your heart means kind of go into things that way that if you halfway do it and you get hurt, it won't hurt as much. Because I'm guarding my heart, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not putting so much into it that when things don't go the way as expected, I'm not hurt. But what this truly means is that above all else, like the first thing you do, the priority that you should take is to diligently and intentionally make guarding your heart a priority. Because everything you do flows from your heart. There were seasons in my life where everything I did flowed from a heart that was broken. And so I was making broken decisions. I was hurting people from that place of a broken heart. I wanted to hurt people before they hurt me. I was allowing hurt to guard my heart. I was enthroning hurt and anger. And those things flowed from my heart. And so the key thing here is, Who's guarding your heart? Because we ask that question, okay, I, I understand what, like, okay, guard my heart, but how do I do that? And so the question is, who's guarding my heart? Because there is a difference. But to, there's a difference in our actions and our atmosphere when I am guarding my heart. And there's a difference in my actions and my atmosphere when I allow Christ to guard my heart. And so oftentimes we can allow other things to guard our hearts, like our emotions, our fears, the desire for relationships, finances, and control. We can allow these things to guard our hearts and our decisions, and everything flows from that posture. And so whatever we allow to guard our hearts is what's on the throne. And so when our emotions guard our heart, our discernments go out of the window, right? And I'm just reacting to everything. Some of us need to be honest that we allow our emotions to guard our hearts. And everything comes from that place of just reacting. And if some of us are honest, we have allowed ourselves to overreact and even embarrass ourselves 
when we overreact because we're just in the moment and that's what we're feeling and that's what our actions flows from and that's what's shaping our atmosphere. When we're fearful, we can be so fatalistic, right? And we're just thinking everything is the, it's the end of the world. I've been in a position where I just was, everything was just so fatalistic. And I was just like, why is everything just so crappy right now? And then I realized it was just that time of the month. <laughs> but I was making decisions from that place of just being overly emotional and overreacting to everything and lashing out and being unreasonable and unforgiving. And sometimes we'll allow a temporary emotion to lead to permanent consequences. Because we're allowing our emotions to guard our heart. But when... I am real about it and realize that emotions are real, but they shouldn't rule us. And when I'm real about this and when Christ is enthroned, he'll allow the spirit to remind me of God's reality. Like it will, it will allow me that God is in control. And even though I feel uncertain and I'm afraid and I'm feeling anxious right now, that I have a spirit of self-control and I have a sound mind. And I can be slow to speak and I can be slow to anger until I actually realize what the reality really is. And so the, the reality of our actions and our atmosphere looks so different when we're guarded by emotions versus allowing Christ to allow, to center us, to ground us and see the true reality of what's going on around us. Relationships can be another source that guards our hearts. When I was in a single season, Lord, I, I knew that I was allowing the desire for relationships to guard my actions and atmosphere. And there were times where I settled for relationships I had no business being in. And so when we are allowing the desire to be in relationship and companionship to guard our heart, we will compromise. We will allow others to abuse and manipulate, and we'll even manipulate to just make people stay. But when we allow Christ to guard and, th to guard and enthrone our hearts, even when it comes to the heart when it comes to romantic desires and relationships, we are reminded of our worth and purpose. He'll give us the strength to trust and know, like we trust that God wants what's best for us. And so even the things that he prohibits for, from, for us is to protect us, not to withhold anything from us. God is truly trying to protect us. So allow God to guard your heart, especially in the areas that deal with love in, in the heart, y'all. I, I share this often, but had God answered the prayers that I prayed to be in prior relationships, I don't even have to finish the sentence, y'all, right? <laughs> but I literally would not be standing here today. I literally would not be serving in ministry because the relationships I was in would not have been conducive to allowing me to serve in my call and purpose. And so set, talk about changing the atmosphere. It would have completely pulled me out of the call that was on my life. And many of us, because we just want to be in a relationship so desperately, we're not realizing that these relationships are pulling us outside of our call. And so we're in a completely different place that God has for us. So I'm going to just leave that there. But guard your heart when it comes to relationships. Allow God to guard and filter our actions and atmosphere when it comes to relationships. Another area is finances, right? Yeah. And so when finances guard our heart, we will hustle, we will hustle, we will place work before God, we will place work before our families, and we'll even lie and say, that's my ministry. Right. 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 
and and a lot of it is rooted in our lack of trust for God's provision, right? And so we'll work, we'll work, and we'll make it happen. I'm being honest. I even look for a side gig, y'all, knowing I have no time. Knowing I have no time, but that, that is rooted in me not trusting God for his provision. And so sometimes we'll go low, we'll scam, and we'll cheat, and we'll do whatever it takes to be able to hold on to something that feels like security. But when I am allowing God to guard my heart, I am reminded as I'm looking at jobs, I'm reminded to seek the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness. And all things should be added to me, will be added to me. That doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. It doesn't make sense that when you say, Lord, I am, fi- I am in need. I'm not saying that you're just being lazy and not working. I'm saying you're, you're working and you're discontent. And you're like, Lord, I want more. But you feel like the only way for me to get more is for me to do it. Versus trusting that as I seek God and I seek righteousness, these things will be added to me. Or trusting that is that if I delight in the Lord, he will give me the desires of my heart. That doesn't make sense in, the, in this earthly logic. It doesn't make sense. It says you got desires, go get it. You want more, go work for it. But when God is saying, you know what, if you got another job, what's going to go off the list? Your time with me. So when we're honest about it, we want to be able to just take control and say, I have security because I've worked to put that money in the bank. But in the spiritual reality, it's saying, seek God and his righteousness. And what you need will be added unto you. Delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. When I am guarding my heart and I'm enthroning my own logic and my own wisdom, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to seek God, and then what I need will be added unto me. What makes sense is work. Get another job. Do not spend time with your family. Do not spend time in the word. Do not serve. Because when we start to just work for it, work for it, work for it, the things that we truly need in our heart and in our lives start to just get crossed off the list. And so this last thing is control can guard our hearts. Ultimately, the fight for control is what shapes our actions because we believe we know what's best for us. We believe, God, I know my call. I know what I am destined for. I know what I've been made for. I know the things that I like. I know the things that I have been gifted and talented and able to do. I know those things better than you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fight against your wisdom. I'm going to fight against the things that your word clearly says for me. And I'm going to fight against the needed change in my life because I know what's best for me. And when I allow control to guard my heart, even as young people, I see this often in our college age student, is that that need for control means that I just want to be autonomous. I don't want you to tell me anything. Let me learn it on my own. Let me figure it out on my own. And it's just like, you don't have to, though. You don't have to. But we just want to be in control. We want to reign. We want to rule. We want to be in control. Don't tell me what I can't and cannot do. And when we allow ourselves to be in a posture where don't tell me what to do, what do you think your actions and your atmosphere look like? When you're telling God, don't tell me what to do. Like, Lord, your scripture says this, but that doesn't make sense to me. Your scripture says this, but I disagree with you. 
What do you think your actions and your atmosphere are going to look like when we're constantly fighting for control with God? When I have fought for control with God, I've just been tired. I'm fighting a losing battle. I'm just tired and frustrated and outside of the will of God. And so many of us, we are guarded by that need and desire for control. But what I want to end it on this message with is we are not that great at being our own kings. We're not that great when we are on the throne. And so I want to share with you that God is on the throne in heaven. But here on earth, we have to choose for God to be enthroned. And so Isaiah 66 says this. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit. And who tremble at my word. When we admit that we are not that good at being God, when we admit that we are not great kings and queens, we will enthrone Christ. The scripture says, these are the ones I look on with favor. How many of us want favor from the Lord? It says, those who are humble and contrite in spirit. That word contrite in the Psalms, David uses this after he murders Uriah. And he realizes that he has sinned and he realizes that he needs to repent and turn to the Lord. And so that contrite spirit means that I realize that I am nothing without the Lord. And so when we're walking around wanting to enthrone ourselves and we're wanting to be the one on the throne, the Lord says, this is who my favor is upon. This is who I look on with favor. Those who are humble and realize that they are not great kings and queens. And those who realize that without the mercies of God, without the mercy and grace of God, They are nothing. And so in this moment, I want us to think about who's on the throne. Who have we allowed to be on the throne? What idea, what fear, what emotions have we allowed to be on the throne? And we're saying today, Lord, I've seen the fruit of my actions. I've seen the fruit of my atmosphere because I've been ruling. And Lord, now I want you to take the throne. I want you to take the throne where you are shaping my actions. I want you to shape my atmosphere. I want you to shape my home. I want you to shape my heart because The condition of my heart right now, all of my actions are detrimental to others. And so, Lord, first clean my heart, Lord, because what's been flowing from it has not been helpful. It's actually, it's been denying you and it's actually been discouraging others to try you. And so, Lord, as my actions flow from my heart, I want you to be the king of my heart. And so every Sunday we get an opportunity for us to make some commitments to respond to the message that's been before you. And if you are in a place where this is the first time that you're saying, Lord, I want you to be the king of my heart. 
and allowing you to be the king of my heart means, Lord, I trust you. I trust that you are God in heaven, and I trust that you sent your son to die for my sins, and now I want to trust you to be Lord of my life. And if there's anyone in this moment that wants to respond with that as, yes, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want you to be on the throne in my heart. If that is a decision that you would like to make today, we want to ask you to stand. That way our ministers can see you, put eyes on you, and be able to come alongside you as you're saying, I am not that great at being a king. And so I want to trust the king of kings in this moment. And then there are others who have said, God, you have been my king. But as I've been leaving this place, I've been enthroning myself right back again. And so you're in a position where you want to recommit. This isn't a first time thing to you, but you're saying in this moment, I want to recommit to you being the king on the throne. And if that is you, we also want to pray for you and ask you to stand. want to thank you for continuously being a Lord and King that has given us chance after chance. You are a gracious King. You are a mindful King. You are a wise King, Lord. We are so thankful that you rule from the individual relationships that you have with us. And so, Lord, I pray that you can meet each and every one of us to our points of needs where it, where it is so difficult to allow you to be king in a particular area of our life. Lord, I pray that we can trust you just a little bit more. Lord, I pray that we can give up our seat as being king and trust you with our entire lives, Lord. Not pieces of us, but all of us, Lord. As this, the heart represents our soul, it represents all of who we are, Lord. And so because you care for us, you command us to guard our heart. And so, Lord, I pray that as we leave this place, we are learning to guard our heart moment by moment. And when we find the theme tracks of our own lives being something that doesn't honor you, Lord, I pray we do a quick self-check and are reminded of your goodness, are reminded of the truth you say about us, are reminded of your sovereignty and your ability to provide your strength and your power, Lord. I pray that we are reminded of those things. And so, Lord, we enthrone you in this space as we are about to move into a time of communion, Lord. We enthrone you, Lord. We remember your work on the cross. We remember that you were broken for us so that we can be whole. And we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. There we go. Amen. Wow, what a word. Amen. 
Come on, give God a hand, praise. So for those of you in the room and those of you that are streaming online, every first Sunday, as a family, as a community, we partake in communion together. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, the ministers are coming with the communion. And um, we do it together. So it's going to run a little differently. Each week we get an opportunity to partake in the means of grace or the elements, if you will. Um, but what we do on first Sunday is we do it together. So that means that when you get your communion, we all take it together. So don't, you know, normally we would go back and, you know, take it, do a prayer in our hearts. But we're going to um, do that together. So what will happen is that after you've gotten your elements, I'll read a scripture and then we'll do a responsive reading and then pray and then partake in communion. Amen. So if you will, please come and receive communion. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Oh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Since for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new the covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in un an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so, that, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen.
So now we want to stand and proceed with a liturgy, if you will, which is a responsive reading. So I will read later than when it says people will read as a congregation. Amen. It says, as we come to the Lord's table, let us come with a spirit of humility and penitence. People. This is okay. We'll do it this way. I'll read the later, then I'll read. You just repeat after me where it says people. Amen. Amen. We're going to get this. All right. It says, when we come to the Lord's table, let us come with a spirit of humility and penitence. Compassionate God, have mercy on us as we pray. Let us examine ourselves, our thoughts, our actions, our motives, and our attitudes towards others. Oh, holy God, have mercy and forgive us our shortcomings. Help us to remember our responsibility to our families and our neighbors, our stewardship to you and the work you have given to our hands. Oh, living God, we stand in need of your grace, strength, and mercy. As we eat the bread, which represents your body, which the true and living bread, open our eyes to recognize the intimacy that you yearn to share with us. O oh, living God, teach us to love you above all else. As we drink the cup, which represents Christ's blood shed for us, we thank you for the new te covenant. Love ye one another, which is written in our hearts. Let us rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you for your broken body and your shed blood, Father. As we often hear, Father, that when we partake of this in community, Father, we get strength. So we recognize everything that your body and your blood represents and means to us. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Um, before we go, I just wanted to remind you all of even the grace that we're able to receive through communion is a reminder that the Lord says, do this in remembrance of me do this into the, the day of the Lord. And so this is just a reminder of even how the message was an invitation for us to enthrone Christ in our hearts. This is also a reminder of how intimate the Lord wants to be with us. How he wants to literally guard your heart. And so I pray that that speaks to someone that your God in heaven wants to be so near to your heart that he wants to guard it. And that is so special. And so um, I want to pray over you and bless you um, that we can be reminded of what is guarding our hearts this week. And so let us stand. If you're willing and able, please stand. May the Lord guard 
in your hearts. May the actions and words and atmosphere be a sweet fruit and aroma to all who are able to witness how differently your life, your life looks when the Lord guards your heart. And so, Lord, we thank you for your willingness to be so near to guard and protect our hearts. We enthrone you in this time. 